How is your creative toolbox changing? Oh, I'm adding to it, right? I mean, you know, I don't think I've thrown anything away. I may use some things less than I used to, but the more I learn and the more I get to practice, more importantly, um, the more uh, tools I'm adding to that, that toolbox. What's also great is some of the tools change size. In other words, there are some tools that I really like and I'm really good with, and so I use those tools because they're very helpful to me. And there are other tools that I've learned that I'm really no good with, and so they're there if I need them. Um, you know, I've never understood the idea of working on your weaknesses. You know, we're always told in our performance reviews, you know, here are your weaknesses and these are the things you need to work on to get to the next level. I've never understood that. The whole idea is to work in our strengths, amplify our strengths, and we, you know, hire our weaknesses. Or uh, so this is the value of a team, right? What's the point of having a team if you, have to be, if you have to improve on your weaknesses? The whole idea is we have you on our team because you're really good at this, you know? And we found somebody else who's really good at this, which you're really bad at. You guys are a team, you know? This is the value of a team. Um, and so I think, I think in, in our workplace, um, our companies do us a great disservice by telling us that we have to fix our weaknesses or improve upon our weaknesses to get to the next level. They should be encouraging us and giving us the tool to amplify our strengths to get to the next level. That's what they want us for, right? Um, otherwise, here are your strengths and here are your weaknesses. Now you're even. Wouldn't you want to be this? You need to be aware of your weaknesses, but, uh, but we, need to, we need to amplify those strengths. What, what are a couple of examples of like the creative tools that, that have brought that out? I'm a lover of creative people. Um, and so any sort of expression of, of, of how you see the world in a, in, with different terminology is fascinating to me. And so even though I myself am a photographer, um, so I have that visual aspect, I'm a huge fan of modern dance and spend a lot of time sort of with dancers and in the dance world and have, you know, tried my hand at choreography just to see, you know, uh, I'm not good. But it, I, I like the idea of trying it, you know? Um, and, uh, and so for me, it's about perspective, which is when, I, when, when you hang out with dancers and you, you, know, you sort of learn to dance a little bit or you learn to choreograph a little bit or you learn to paint a little bit, you know? I'm not a painter, but I painted a painting recently, you know? Um, you know, if you, if you understand, it's like chaos theory. You know, everything's connected, right? And, you know, it's like we, we, we conveniently divide up our lives, like here's my personal life, here's my professional life, I'm, you know, here's my social life, I'm looking to find balance. It's just you, you know, and all the same things apply. And so if you're, if you're good here, you can apply what you learn here to there, you know? And so when you, when you learn how things interconnect and, and, and people interconnect and how human relationships work and, and presence, I mean, you want to learn about presence? Take a dance class. You learn all about how to present yourself and be forwards. You know, take an acting class, learn how to, you know, present your speech. People say, Simon, how'd you learn this? It's like, I, I'm exposed to all of this. Um, so the tools I've learned have just mainly been different perspectives on how other people use their creative talents to see the world. And if I can get little pieces of those, they, they help me in, in many, many different ways. 